Making places where you spend your time Ain't no place I'd rather go You're a funny little critter and I love you so And I wanna take a ride and we'll bear in my mind Now come and sit down with me in a rocking chair Coffee pot is nice and hot Mixing in underwear That dream you had last week Swimming all around with the fish in the sea Come sit down with me in a rocking chair Welcome back, riders. Today I'll be showing you my review and range test of the Nomad 1 from Velotrek. A link to my first impressions about this bike is in the description if you want more details about the build. Simple yet solid, this bike holds the best in-class first impressions I've held for an electric bike, and second best overall, with first place so far going to the K26S. Though remember that in-class is an important distinction about this review. There are many different styles of e-bikes and different price brackets that would be better suited for different riders. As far as hardtail fat bikes go that are pretty well rounded in the $1,500 price bracket, this one holds king in my opinion. But of course it's not perfect as we talked about in our first impressions. There are a few tweaks they could have made to this bike which would have cost them little to no money which would have really bumped it up even more. Those being mainly no customizations in the display whatsoever, which means no custom pedal assist levels, and a lack of cruise control, which is a big disappointment for an otherwise perfect bike. With that being said, and after riding the bike for a couple of months, those few shortcomings are pretty easy for me to personally overlook. Our range test today starts out with perfect weather on a beautiful day, 72 degrees in the afternoon. I kick off out of town through a healthy mix of back roads which are mostly vacant. Here I'll be spending the next three hours on the bike, using mostly pedal assist level 3, as I find it to be a good compromise between full throttle operations and stretching out the max range of this bike. In level 3 it keeps us at about 15 miles an hour on average. There are a few miles where I give the bike some full throttle burst for fun and because the view is just so scenic that I thought it'd be enjoyable. But these are real world conditions and it's simply how I ride the bike when I'm going on long trips. Here I've planned out an exact 40 mile round trip and I'm a bit skeptical of whether or not the bike will have enough power to get me all the way back home as it has a slightly smaller than average 14.4 amp hour battery. Usually on fat tire bikes in the 26 inch class you'll see 16 to 18 amp hours. However, Velotrek has claimed to custom tune this to be more efficient than other fat tire bikes in its class, so in this situation I'm kind of trusting the advertisement. Out of the box I originally noted that this bike's acceleration, uphill climbing, and all round tune of the speed controller motor combination felt really good, and now I can say without a doubt that this is the best out of any 48 volt e-bike I've tested. Having spent some time with the bike, I can now take that one step further, and they've done a pretty good job at calibrating this thing to reduce the effects of voltage sag. I don't notice any notable drop in torque until this thing's below half battery, which is pretty impressive. As many of you know, it can take some time to adjust to a new bike, find all the pressure points, and make all the fine adjustments to ensure it's comfortable over long rides. Thankfully, my thoughts about this bike's comfort have not changed since our first impressions. At least me being a tall rider, the ergonomics of this thing are wonderful and it is still the most comfortable bike I've ever ridden. The Nomad utilizes the same style of seat you'll find on many mid-range electric bikes. Wide in the back, narrow in the front. That's not a complaint for me, I find these seats to be a good compromise, both for long range comfort riding and for pedal efficiency. You can get something cushy and more comfortable if you don't plan on doing a lot of pedaling, or something that's more efficient if you really want to push the range. This is a good middle ground and I like it. It doesn't really start to burn until 20 miles, but admittedly at the end of our 40 mile trip I was ready to get off the bike the burn was quite a bit but still I mean that's 40 miles on the bike so you know they can only do so much another category that I'd like to touch back on which we briefly discussed in our first impressions is stability you wouldn't expect a bike with an upright seating position swept back lifted handlebars and a step through design to feel very stable in off-road conditions or at least the back road gravel which I'm riding on 
But during my rides, this does not feel like a step through bike. This feels very well planted to road conditions, and I have no issues riding this in sketchy situations. Where it is probably true that the traditional high step design would be better suited for my riding conditions, I have no regrets choosing the step through model. Now I'd like to add another positive and negative to the heads up display, which I didn't realize in my first impressions video. For the positive, on the USB charging, I noticed that when I unplugged my phone at the end of this 40 mile round trip, it had 100% battery. So I would assume this is at least a 2 amp charge, enough to keep your phone up and running, even with the Relive app running in the background with GPS and the screen on the entire time. On a lot of other e-bikes where I have it plugged in during long trips, I notice the battery will usually be down to about 70%. So they're probably 1 amp charges. Well, this is good if you plan on going camping you know that when you get to your destination you'll have a full phone battery. It's a small convenience. For my complaint about the display I'd like to correct a mistake I made in my first impressions video but in my defense it fooled me into thinking it had something it didn't. A bit of information that could be valuable to some. When you click the menu button, you can cycle through a di few different display options which give you some useful information. For me, the most useful being wattage, showing you exactly how many watts you're pulling from the battery at any given time. And this works great, I'm happy about that. But I thought it gave me a voltage readout because when you cycle through the display, it says 48 volts. But this actually never changes. It's simply the display telling you what type of battery you have, but not actually how many volts are left in it. That's disappointing, I don't know why they did that. Unless mine's defective, but I doubt it. The shifter and derailleur have not let me down either. They're still very crisp, instantly shifting through every gear without missing a beat. This might not sound like a big deal, or it may sound expected, especially in this price bracket, but remember in my riding conditions, especially when I take this bike to work, it has to deal with a fair bit of mud, road grit, and other bits of debris that it gets sucked into the chain. And it's just held up great. Same goes to the front and rear brake system, which are both hydraulic. I've had to make no adjustments to them, nor have I had to bleed the lines. They haven't gotten spongy over time, and they still have a nice solid wall that they run into when you squeeze them. Very responsive. The bike doesn't have massive rotors, so the braking power is nothing super impressive, but it's miles better than anything mechanical. I do try to keep this bike a little cleaner than most of my others simply because I really like the color. It just looks great. But don't let it fool you. This has been through some muddy conditions and it's ridden in the rain a handful of times. It's held true to its water resistant ratings and even the anti-corrosion chain has shown no signs of rust. Depending on the intended use of a particular bike, I can be pretty lenient when it comes to certain aspects, such as the tail light. If it's designed to be a trail bike or off-road rider, then having a button sail tail light is not a big deal. But because the Nomad 1 can really shine for commuters in rough road conditions, I'm disappointed to see that they did not integrate it into the bike's electronics. The included button sail tail light is bright enough to get the job done, but not rechargeable. As far as the integrated headlight that's included with the bike, it hasn't let me down. I ride to and from work in pitch black situations, and it's always been just bright enough to get the job done, never dim enough to make me consider getting another external headlight. There are some bikes I've seen that are way worse, and others I've seen that are a lot better, so I put this smack dab in the middle. Storage for bikes is always something you need to consider when weighing your options, especially when you're looking at full-size fat tire electrics. This is by no means something that's going to be easy to store if you live in a small environment. However, it's by no means the worst. It has a shorter wheelbase than some of the other electric bikes I've tested, so it's reasonable. I've heard mixed arguments about puncture risk on fat tire bikes on both sides of the fence. Some claiming that if you run them at lower PSI, they're less likely to be punctured by thorns and small bits of road debris. Others claiming that their wider footprints makes them a bigger target and easier to hit. I can't say one way or the other. I've been pretty lucky so far, but I did get my first puncture a couple days ago. I picked up a roofing nail on my way home to work. I think it was when I was going off the side of the road to give traffic the right of way. Anyways, I can say that on 26 inch fat tire bikes, repairing a puncture is incredibly easy. It was on the rear tire and I didn't even have to take the tire off. I simply fully deflated it remove the puncture, and I was able to, by hand, without any tools, unseat one side of the tire while the, while the wheel was still on the bike, and pull the tube out, and then patch it, put it back together. 
It was with a $2 patch kit in about 10 minutes of my time. And then I just pumped it back up. So uh, there's that. I've heard that the 20 inch fat tires can be kind of hard to unseat. So you may need some tire levers in that situation. But that's a good trick to keep in mind if you do get a puncture when you're out riding. A pump and a patch kit might be all you need. To date, I haven't tested any electric bikes with a sketchy build quality on the frame. The High Boy P7 was a mess for the components they chose to put on the frame, but as far as most of the components I've seen on electric bikes, they seem to be adequate. The Velotrex Nomad 1 is no exception. The frame's build quality is beefy, it's got nice welds, and a lot of reinforcement for its step-through design. But like we said, if you want to use it for more aggressive riding, the High Step version is recommended. Critical components they've chose to match to this frame, I also have no complaints about. The forks aren't the best in the world, but they are by no means poor quality, and they're adequate for this bike's intended purpose. I don't think you'll have to replace these for many years. Having said that, the forks on the Nomad 1 don't seem to do much in the way of comfort. They still do great when soaking up large, unexpected bumps in the road. They don't feel poor quality, they don't get chunky or have any unexpected resistance like you get on cheap forks when they get debris down into the seals. No, you can still push down on these and they feel smooth, it's just when you're riding the bike they don't seem to do much, even on their softest preload setting. I would like to point out though, this might not be the forks themselves, it could just be the geometry of the bike. These upright riding positions put most of the weight on the back tire, which when you think about it is probably a good thing for a step through bike. To cap off our range test, I'm happy with what I got. Just over 41 miles when we got back to where we started. I find this to be well within expected limits of what they advertise, keeping in mind that we used mid-level pedal assist, some full throttle, and we're riding a lot of gravel back roads. To sum up my review of the Nomad 1 from Velotrek, this is an enjoyable bike to ride in pretty much any situation. I can't say for sure if it's my favorite, but it's definitely in the top three. If it had cruise control, it might even be higher. But it's certainly a bike I'll use to compare against other electrics in this price range. As they've done so much right, there's not much to complain about. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.